matzah comes from the Hebrew word matzah. It's the unleavened bread used during the Jewish holiday of Passover. When the Jews fled Egypt, they were forced to leave so quickly that their bread never rose. Matzah is eaten to commemorate this flight of the Jews called the Exodus. We took a trip to Streitz's Matzah Factory on the corner of Rivington and Suffolk Streets on New York City's Lower East Side to show you how this simple cracker is made. We've been in the matzah business since 1925. In this location, actually my great-great-grandfather started on Pitt Street, which is not too far from here in 1914 we moved here. Streitz's is one of the last family-owned and operated matzah companies in America. Aaron Gross, the founder's great-great-grandson, helps run the factory along with his father, Mel Gross, and cousin, Aaron Yagoda. It was my great-great-grandfather, Aaron Streit, who started up the company. He then had two sons that were in the business, my great-grandfather, Irving Streit, and his brother, Jack Streit. They, in turn, had, both had five daughters, so that's where we lost the Streit's name. Uh, but still, all everybody in the business is still direct descendants of Aaron Streit. We like being a part of a community in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. People come and visit a little retail store next to the factory, um, and it's a nice integral part of the neighborhood. Making Passover matzah is a carefully supervised and scrupulously timed operation. It accounts for more than 60% of the entire business. We start baking for Passover in late October. Early November, we're baking all the way through up until Passover time. As soon as the flour touches water, and the, the process needs to be done within 18 minutes. It's about 85 pounds of flour in each, in each vat, and say 20, 25 pounds of water, depending on the, how, the, how the oven's working that day, whether they want a soft batch or a, or a hard batch of dough. Um, that's going to be mixed for three and a half minutes, four minutes. Um, then it's going to get fed by hand, dumped into a bin, down into the chute. For each batch of matzah, a rabbi breaks off a piece of raw dough and certifies that the batch is indeed kosher for Passover. Well, we're in one of the mixing rooms in the factory. Uh, everyone in this room, they all are Shomer Shabbos Jews. Everyone uh, handling the matzah before it's baked, before it's produced, have to be Jewish. Uh, after that, anybody can really handle it. Once the uh, dough is, is poured down into the chute, which feeds into the oven, a rabbi is going to take the bowl and is going to inspect it and clean it so there's nothing left on there from the earlier batch. And they're going to also have to clean the blades which mix the dough as well. Uh, make sure they're completely spotless, there's nothing left over, nothing stuck to them that may in turn make the, make the rest of the product hummus, which is not kosher for Passover. Rabbis are a very large part of the process here. Uh, we're going to have five mishkiyam, which are rabbis that are constantly uh, looking over production, overseeing that the factory does what we're supposed to be doing. Um, to keep things kosher. My name is Rabbi Yehuda Rosenbaum. I represent the Chafke Kosher Supervision. The main factor is when it comes to matzah, it has to be non-leavened. No, no rising, no yeast products in the matzah. Therefore, the Aaron Strike Company and other matzah factory manufacturers will engage a rabbi to supervise to make sure, from the religious law perspective, that there is no leavening in the matzah. The entire process from flour to matzah must take place within 18 minutes. Any batch taking longer than that is discarded it would be considered leavened the product and therefore would not be allowed to be used for Passover. It's going through a series of rollers um, that are just mixing it constantly, grinding it up, uh, and makes it into a hard dough. Then it gets fed into, a, I think, four, four other rollers that are going to get it to the right thickness before it finally gets goes to the stippler machine. The stippler perforates the dough to further ensure that it will absolutely not rise. Then it gets cut into fours and then into eights and gets fed into the oven. It's a direct heat oven. It's about 900 degrees in there. Uh, the oven is 72 feet long and it's going to cook for about a minute and a half from one end to the other. We, got, we have uh, two men, one, one man pulling it out in sheets of eight. He's going to pull out 15 sheets, stack them on top of each other, pass it along to another guy who's going to break it into individual one pound packages and then put it into a basket. It breaks very easily if you pull it out too hard or, uh, or not fast enough, it's going to start piling up on you. If you pull it out too hard, it's going to, you're going to break it. The baskets go up through the factory. We're on a couple different floors here, so the basket's going to take it upstairs, give it some time to cool off before we put it into the boxes to get fed into the packing machines. So we actually have a guy standing there 
is going to take it out of the basket, put it into the packing machine, where it's going to get fed into the machine. It's going to put be put into one pound boxes. These old but sturdy machines turn out 50 boxes of matzah per minute. Uh, this is the overwrap machine. It's going to take the one pound boxes of, of matzah and put the overwrap. This here is the oldest machine we have in the factory. Uh, my great grandfather purchased it back in 1948. Uh, it's been here ever since. It, it's made up of a bunch of gears and a bunch of chains. Uh, and then send it down into the five pound overwrap, which you see in the grocery stores. The factory averages about 350,000 sheets of matzah per day. Aaron Gross didn't originally think that his future lay in matzah. It wasn't something I planned, it just happened, and I'm very happy, I'm very happy with what I'm doing. I work closely with my father, I spend a lot of time with my father, uh, two of my cousins, and we all get along very well. It's nice working with family. And for nearly 75 years, families have been making strices part of their Passover traditions as well.